So I'm being, I'm being studying with uh, the group of, of uh, students that work with me in the afternoon. We've been studying prayer. And we've been reading different co quotes from the Spirit of Prophecy and examples in the scripture about prayer. And uh, I find that uh, this quote here that it caught my attention. And it says there are certain conditions upon which we may expect that God will hear and answer our prayers. Now the title, I don't know if you remember the title that I had on the beginning. What was the title? Right. So it's not right now what you think it is. It is something that I find in the step to Christ. But so what are the two conditions? A certain conditions is two of them. One of them is this. The first one is the need of help. So one of the reasons why you don't pray that, that fervently or that much in our lives is because we don't feel the need. That's the first condition for our prayers to be answered. It says there is the need of help. And you know, uh, the scripture is full of promises of, of uh, our needs that God wants to supply. And so in Isaiah 43, 44, 3 says, I will pour water upon him that is thirst. Do you remember one of the Beatitudes that it says, blessed are the ones who are? What thirst for righteousness and our hunger and thirst for righteousness, right? That's what is in Matthew 5, 6. So blessed are the ones who have that need. And so, but I find that the greatest need that we have today is, is, is beyond that. So we have now reached the place where we find ourselves poor, blind, and needed in the greatest need of effectual and immediate aid. Now, what shall we do? We shall cry mighty to God, yes. The Lord is near to us to call upon him to all who call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He also will hear their cry and save them. Now I find something that it caught my attention on a step to Christ. And it has to do with Adam and Eve. And I've been stuck on the Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3 for a long time. And this is what the Spirit prophet says in Step to Christ. It says, in the senseless state, men held joy in communion with him, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. But after his sin, he could no longer find joy in holiness, and he sought to hide from the presence of God. Such is still the condition of the unrenewed heart, it is not in harmony with God and find no joy in communion with him. So this was shocking, and, and I knew all this, but I started to meditate and pray about it because the greatest need of man is Jesus Christ. It's one chapter in Step to Christ that says that the title is The Sinner's Need, The Sinner's Need of Christ. When we are in this condition is when we have the, our greatest need is God, but at the same time, we don't find joy in his presence. Now, this is the good news. And you know what happened when Adam and Eve sinned. What happened? The greatest good news was that God was looking for them. They hide from him. They feel a shame of what they did, but they couldn't find harmony with God. They hide from him. They try to resolve the issues and the problems on their way. They, the Bible says that they cut some 
some lips for the tree, some uh, branches, and they cover themselves with whatever they find to cover their nakedness. So that's what is, is the human nature that does when they don't look for the solution. The greatest need of all, all of us is Christ. But the good news is that he is the one who comes and looks for us. See, we have it in the scripture. Jesus left the 99 to find, to look and find the one that was lost. We find it in the whole scripture. This is the good news. So, we have a lot of needs. needs. This is one of the lists that I found when you put needs, what is our basic needs. Now, I don't really consider a lot of them over there. I believe that these other ones are basically our basic needs that we all have, that is love, belonging, security, direction, and self-esteem. In all this, Adam and Eve lost when they separate from God. And we all have these needs. We all have to be satisfied on these needs because we need that. We lost the fulfillment of all of that when we, our parents, Adam and Eve, sinned. And for that reason, we inherit all those tendencies. And I want to quote something before. Let me just show you. This is my favorite verse. I think I have it here somewhere where he says, and I'm going to quote it in a little because I think it goes all the way down. I'm just going to mention it now. That when Eve, the angels came and talked to Eve and says, don't separate from your husband. Now, this is symbolic. Who is the husband? Who in the Bible is representing the bride? So who is the husband? So the angel says, don't separate from the husband. What Eve did is by her doing, she didn't notice until she found herself separated from the husband. And then fear came to her consciousness, and she felt that she was in danger. But what happened? She reasoned, and he said, I can handle this. I'm wise enough and strong enough to face the devil, the enemy, instead of looking for the husband. So this is the condition that was in the beginning that brought all these great needs that we have. But in Jesus, it says there, all our needs are going to be satisfied. So one of them is love. The Bible says that God loves us. Yes. It's full of it. The Bible is, is a letter of love for us from the beginning to the end. And the scripture says that, that the woman can forget her sucking child, that she shall not have compassion on the son of her womb. Yeah, but they may forget. But God says, I will never forget you or forsake you, ever. When I was, who, who's 15 here? When I was 15, who's 15? When I was your age, I got converted. I used to be in the popular church, the Catholic church, for all my life until I was 15. And then God came to my life in a powerful way. I started reading the Bible. I never read the Bible before. So one of the verses that to me was very, very powerful was Philippians 4.19. But then I started learning so many other ones that it was encouraging to me, like this one, before I formed thee and your belly, I knew in the belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sacrificed you. And I ordained you as a prophet unto nations. Now we're like, oh, sorry, uh, what it says? Sanctify. Sanctify you, not sacrifice. I said, I did. Sanctify you. 
I don't have my glasses. I have them here. I forget to put my glasses. Yeah. So, uh, so this was impressive to me because God knew me before I came to exist. He already saw what is it that I'm going to be doing in my life. And so God satisfied a great need that I had. And this need was the essence of my existence. So the scripture says too that he loved us so much he gave his only begotten son. Right? That's the, in a way that, that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So I embrace this verse that for you is really common. But it was for me like everything. God loved me in a powerful way. And I was craving so much this love. I was empty. So he started filling, it, filling up myself with these beautiful verses in the scripture that he talks about how much he loves me. And so he paid all, all what I own in my life, all the sinfulness that I had. He says, don't worry about it. I forgive you. And it's like you never did anything wrong in your entire life. And I was like, what? It is this. That's what we call the gospel. Because he was willing to pay the consequences of all my sins. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is dead. So I owe him everything. So like that, he started bringing all these beautiful things in my life. I wanted to be part of something. And of course, well, as a teenager, you want to fit in. But what happened is when I came to the church, all the kids that were my age, they wanted to go to the world and have fun. And I was shocked because I came from over there where I couldn't find anything to satisfy my needs to the church when I find everything. And so the youth that was in the church was inviting me to go back to the world because they want to have fun. So I was shocked. And I would say to them, I was talking to them, say, hey, this is it's nothing out there. Everything is in here and says, oh, you don't, you don't understand anything. You already have fun. That's why we want to try it. But I wanted to be part of something. And the, and the Bible says that I have a father. I have a father in heaven who loves me so much. And he called me his, his child. And let me tell you something. Since then, I never in my life feel lonely. I feel God's presence in my life since then. Every single second of my life. I have struggles in my life. I have conflicts in my life. I have ups and downs in my life, but he's always been with me. And I know the difference before I was feeling empty. I know the difference. Some of you may be born in the church. And you never probably experienced that, or maybe you do. You maybe never experienced the real presence of God in your life, but it's available. It's available for all of us. You belong to a family, and Jesus called us brethren. He's our brother. So surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. In his stripes, and in, in with his stripes, we are healed. That's how much Jesus understands me. You see, we are friends as friends. You can be very close to somebody and understand a little bit of what the other person is passing through. But Jesus feels with you. He not only understands what you're passing through, he feels with you exactly he knows every circumstance that you're facing and he understands it he knows it and he feels with you 
That's how great our God is. So that's why this, that Paul, Paul says, and I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate me from, the, from God or his love, the love of God. That's how close God wants us to be. But we don't have that need because of our sin. We run away from God. He loved us so much. He who was one with God has linked himself with the children of men by tithes that are never to be broken. Jesus is not ashamed to call us brethren. He is our sacrifice, our advocate, our brother, brother, bearing our human form before the Father's throne. And through eternal ages, one with the race, he has redeemed the Son of Man. So he satisfies every single need that we have the proper way. He is the greatest need we have. Self-esteem, self-worth. You know that we look for approval? We all look for approval. Right? We wish to everybody recognize what we do or not, and that helps us. Supposedly, we hold on to some things like that. But God gave us a self-esteem that don't depend on none of that. None of that. You know the story of the prodigal son. He lost everything, right? That the love of God was conditional about his obedience to him and his, the way he, he, he behaved. No. When this, this shallow of, of this man came back, he was horribly dressed. Right? He stink probably, right, because he was working in, in, a, in a farm with his pigs there. You ever pass through a farm that is pigs? Well, you, you don't have to go that far. Cows here, I mean, you pass through an area where his cows and it's just horrible, right? But he was even desiring the food of the pigs. That was his condition. And the father, when he saw him, he didn't got like, you know. He went and, 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 and hold him in his arms. And he said, my son was dead, and now he's alive. See, that's the love of God. He lifted him up from wherever he was and, and, give him, and give him the privilege to be called his son and gave him authority over his servants and over his property. And everything he owned, it belonged to him. So God's, God sees us different than what we see others and we see ourselves. If we're not too tall, we're too short, we're too wide or, or skinny, it is so many things that Satan uses for us to push us down. If you don't have this kind of hair or this kind of eyes or this muscular body or not, or talent, but God sees us totally different. See, the value that God gave us go beyond all this. We are in the heart of God, the most precious thing. He left everything to come and save us individually. Because for him, that's how much value we have. He paid it all. He sacrificed. He didn't, he didn't care about being considered what they were accusing him of being innocent and the way he was crucified i mean is is incredible so in jesus all these needs are being fulfilled security we know psalms 23 but you know what we know all this but we pass through a little ballot of debt and we feel they're gonna die and there's no solution for anything and we feel lonely we don't go to the source. We don't go to the shepherd. We don't even see him there. We don't even want, we don't even want to pray, open the Bible, because that's our condition. Do you remember? 
but that's where, where we need it the most. And he is there. See, if God is for us, who can be against us? We read on the whole testament how God fight the fight for the Israelites. But they say, no, we don't want you. <laughs> they wanted to worship idols. I'm being studied Jeremiah. You know, Jeremiah was, was passing through so much rejection from God's people, and he was just giving them a message for them to repent and go back to the solution, and they will not be taken away as slaves and destroy the temple and the city. And they say, we don't need God. They were worshiping idols. They were substituting the true God for images in the temple of God. That's our condition. But, for, but we have direction. God has to, already a path for you and me. You see, we are citizens of, of heaven. We have a, a citizenship up there. We are pilgrims here. You see, before I didn't understand none of this. I thought that my life was just to go to school and get married, have kids. My, my, my sense of, of direction was on this earth. But God came and changed it and gave me a direction above all the circumstances of this earth. It's beyond all this. So, what is the greatest need of men? The greatest need of men. The heart of God yearns over his earthly children. We love is stronger than dead. You see, this is good news. Because in our stage, our stage of, of sinful stage, sinful condition, we have a God that is going to do the impossible to reach to you and me. And you know what? Because he wants to satisfy every single need that you and I have. The Spirit of God is continually impressing the minds of men to seek for those things which alone will give peace and rest. The higher, holier, joy of heaven. Who? The Spirit of God. But we are in this condition. We, we know this. What time are we supposed to finish? So 7.30, 7.20, it's almost done. Yeah, I have a lot, so I've got to finish here. So the Savior's life and death and intercession, the ministry of angels, the pleading of the Spirit, the Father working above and through all, the unceasing interest. Now, this is amazing. We don't feel the need, but heaven has filled the need for saving us, to saving us and blessing us. We don't feel it, God feel it. The angels, all heaven, is interest in our salvation. It's incredible. They're working above all, through all, the unceasing interest of heavenly beings. All are enlisted in behalf of man's redemption. This is the good news. So I get so excited when I study all this because in our situation that we don't feel the need, it is the whole heaven host, God, the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Jesus Christ, looking for you and me. You know, that's great. I had a presentation one time that says it's harder to be lost than to be saved. Who is against God? He is working your salvation. 
with all this quest of holiness and heaven. So, it always impresses me that picture of Jesus knocking on the door. It's, it's just incredible. He's always there, just waiting for you and me to let him in. So we're going to pray now. And so I'm going to make a short prayer, and then we all can pray alone. If you're going to kneel, and you just do your prayer, please, let's kneel. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for loving us so much. You wish we can spend more time with you and communion with you. And you can talk to us more often through your Bible and through your messages, through the spirit of prophecy. But we are so busy. We are so tired sometimes. And we postpone those things for later. When is the greatest need we have? to spend time with you, and you will satisfy all our needs. And we missed it. And you know that. That's our condition. But you want to regenerate our hearts. You want to impress in our hearts through your Holy Spirit that the greatest need we have is to spend time with you. So please, Lord, keep doing that. And help us to not resist. Please, that's my prayer tonight. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thanks for joining us for our prayer meeting. Please feel free to continue praying wherever you may be because we believe that prayer changes things. If you've been blessed by our program, why not leave a special prayer request or a praise report in the comments below and we'll share it with our prayer team. May God be with you.